Hi guys, and welcome to another one of my declutter series. Today we are gonna be going through all of my eyeshadow little mini palettes. So things that are duos, trios, quints, or quads. When I did my palette declutters, I kind of looked at anything that was six eyeshadows or more and put that in this collection. Anything that was kind of in that two to five range has landed in today's declutter. So I have this little container that I keep them in in my drawer. It's not full to overflowing, but I definitely know there's some things in here that I don't reach for that I would like to declutter. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay all these out and we'll get started. Okay guys, so here are all of my shadows, both high-end and drugstore are included here. So we are gonna go ahead and do some swatching, decide what we wanna keep, etc. Okay, let's start up here. These three are actually from e.l.f. They're in this really shiny silver packaging. This is the shade Naked Roses. I think this is part of their uh, barely their line, Barely Beautiful, Barely Something or Other, or I'm probably getting this wrong. I'll put it up on the screen. So this is the shade Naked Roses. This is the shade Matte Essentials. And this is the shade Natural Nudes. Okay, so this is Natural Roses. Let's do a couple quick swatches here uh, so you can get a sense for what these shades look like. Uh, they're not bad, they are. I do remember them being a smidge powdery. This was kind of a mix of both shimmers and, or kind of satins and some mattes. Um, I'm not gonna reach for this. I'm gonna go ahead and pass this on. This nude one, I think I'm gonna feel the same way about. I didn't feel like the satiny shades were anything to write home about. They were just okay. The mattes were actually what was kind of the bigger star in this collection. So um, yeah, nothing in here is screaming my name. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass this one on as well. This little matte quad I'm kind of torn on just because it's got some really interesting cooler tone shades and you don't often find cooler tone matte palettes at the drugstore. Um, and you could definitely create a full look out of this. Yeah, see, they're very soft and pretty. It's gonna give you a really pretty cool toned look. This is the other matte cool tone palette that I have. This is from Physicians Formula. This is called Quartz Quartet. I was just thinking about, you know, if I was gonna keep a more cool toned matte eyeshadow palette, which would I gravitate towards more? Uh, I think the tones in this e.l.f. one are actually better. So I do think I may pass this one on. While we're at it, let's talk about these other Physicians Formula matte palettes. This is Canyon Classics. This is probably the one they are the most well known for. And then this one is Classic Nudes. Obviously these are more warm shades. Um, I do like these little palettes, but I honestly don't find myself reaching for this one a ton, even though it's nice warm shades. I feel like I've got that in more palettes. So I'm gonna pass this one on. I'm now sitting here thinking, do I need to keep both of these or if should I just keep one? Cause they both are a little cool leaning. Yeah, see, those palettes really have the same undertones to them. You know, I think I'm gonna actually keep the e.l.f. one. I think I've had this one for a while. I've definitely reached for it. I've played with it a ton. It's gonna be easier to create a full look out of this e.l.f. one than this Physicians Formula one. So I definitely don't need both. These tones are way too similar to warrant keeping both. So I'm gonna keep the e.l.f. past the Physicians Formula along. Uh, two I know I'm keeping. These are the J. Cat Triple Crown Baked Shadows. This is the shade Baked Alaska. It's a really pretty cool tone baked eyeshadow that is super pigmented and really pretty. I mean, just really foiled, gorgeous shadows. And then this is the shade Dolce de Leche. I have actually heard people recommend using these as um, highlighter shades. I think it might have been a different one than Dolce de Leche, than the two that I'm holding here, but um, just really pretty colors. I like the formula of these. They are baked formula, but they are really creamy to the touch. And then because they are baked, you can wet them really easily and turn this shine into something that's even more metallic. So I definitely like this formula from JCAC. I'm gonna hang on to these two. Okay, these are two little L'Oreal quads. These are their Color Riche Pocket Palettes. This is the shade French Biscuit. And then this is the shade Avenue de Roses. I'm sure that's French and I'm butchering it. This is the formula where I feel like their mattes are better than their shimmers to be totally honest. So this matte shade, these two matte shades in here are like super creamy and pigmented. 
Sorry, I picked up way too much on my finger there. Um, blend out like a dream, absolutely stunning. Shimmer shade in here is okay. It's not great, but it's not awful. And then this metallic black shade is like, it's pretty metallic actually. Um, you put this over a sticky base. And part of the reason I've kept this honestly is I thought this shade was pretty darn cool with this like high shine foily base. Let's swatch this rose one so you can see what these look like as well. I liked this rose one because it was mostly mattes in here. So there is the roses one. I don't feel like I'm gonna reach for these. I'm gonna pass them on. I probably should have mentioned in the intro, I tend to be harder on these kinds of palettes than I am on a lot of other things. And that is because, you know, for me, I, I can see the purpose for grabbing a single shadow when I'm really looking for a specific color. I can definitely, get lots of inspiration from a palette. So when I look at these smaller kind of quads and duos and uh, trios and things, I really want to either love the formula of all of the shades and or feel like I can get a complete look out of all of them. If some of the shades are lackluster, if some of them don't like inspire me, if I don't think that it's something that I'm gonna reach for to create a complete look, it's probably to the curb. So let me give you one example of a quad that I love and what I kind of look for when I think of a really well done quad or duo, etc. This is from J Manuel Beauty. This is his trance eyeshadow palette. I believe this is exclusive to HSN. But why I like this one is every time I create an eye look with this, I use this in the crease, this in the corner, this under my brow bone and to lighten the inner corner and this all over the lid. And it might be a boring eyeshadow palette by like, you know, eyeshadow standards, uh, but it makes the most beautiful look. Like every time I get done with this, I'm always so in love with my eye look and it's completely simple, but the shadows all perform. It's a perfect little work quad. I have traveled with this before. I like the little mirror in it. So yeah, this is just a really great palette. All the shadows perform, all the last, it makes a really concise, pretty eye look. So this to me, I will always have a place in my collection. All right, let's talk Wet n Wild because I have a pile of these little shadowy palettes over here and I don't know if I want to keep all of them, some of them I really need to kind of make a decision on these. So this was a limited edition. This came out a couple falls ago. This is plaid to the bone. I kept this one because I liked two out of the three shades quite a bit. Uh, this is a really pretty taupe shade. It's in their old formula, so it's super creamy and buttery. And I thought this green shade was really pretty. So those two shades were really pretty there. And then this was sort of matte navy color that really didn't have any pigmentation at all. So I was really keeping it because these were such stellar shades. Okay, I have this shade in other palettes. I have a darker green that I prefer more than this in several palettes. That navy was awful. We're gonna go ahead and pass this on. Old walking on eggshells, new walking on eggshells, old silent treatment, new silent treatment. So I like what they're doing in the sense that they've added a matte brow bone shade here into all of these. Um, I will admit I have not gotten done fully playing with these yet. I've put all my effort and energy into playing with the uh, larger Wet n Wild palettes um, and then got distracted by some other drugstore eyeshadow palette releases. So these have not gotten the love and attention that they need uh, to really give you guys a solid review yet. From an overall design perspective, I do really appreciate what they did here by adding a transition shade on here. The thing that I'm a little concerned about is once again, the quality the reason I loved walking on eggshells as much as I did was for this shade here at the very bottom, which was smooth and creamy and pigmented. And my first reaction when I felt what's supposed to be its counterpart is that it was a lot more powdery and less creamy. I mean, you can see just from running my finger over the top of that, that there is definitely some powdery sort of kick up from there. The colors are kind of sort of similar to one another. Okay, so now that I swatched those side by side, that's not horrible. I definitely still prefer the texture of this walking on a chill shade to the new formula, but I think, you know, at least from finger swatches, I think I'm getting something, you know, kind of comparable to one another there. So the one that I know is gonna make me kind of sad, this is Silent Treatment. This is just like the most beautiful, beautiful sort of plummy, uh, taupe shade. I freaking love this shade. I have reached for this quad specifically for this one shade in here. And this one in here I know is not quite the same undertone. You can just tell it's not quite as pigmented and as deep. So I might possibly end up keeping both of these just for that one shade. I don't know. Makes me super sad. I do like the transition shade they threw in here for this one. I think it's a perfect transition shade. Um, really wish they had left the glitter out of that deep black there. 
but I do, do think that black feels like an improvement over the old one. I think what I'm telling you guys here is I'm like puzzling out these eyeshadow quads because in all honesty, I need to test them and I really haven't put them to the test yet to tell you, yes, one is better than the other, um, other than to swatch the shades in these that I was super concerned about uh, being different from one another. And I definitely think they feel different than one another, how they apply differently on their eyes, I don't know. So I'm actually gonna put these to the side and actually test these um, over the next couple days, do one on one eye, one on the other, and see if I notice any real marketable difference. So these are all gonna go to the maybe pile, I guess is what I will call them. Okay, so these are the other four I have not tested yet. So I am kind of excited for some of these color combos because I think they could be fun. This is Lights Out. Let's swatch these for you real fast. Black is pretty intense. I wish they hadn't put the silver sparkle in there. That actually seems pretty. I really like that green shade. Fun, smoky look. All right, next up, let's swatch this guy. This is Sweet as Candy. Uh, that one's okay. It might make a pretty look, but none of the shimmers in there are totally like wowing me. I don't know, we'll try this one, but it's not like blowing my mind. All right, this one is Hooked on Vinyl. That could make a fun look. That one looks fun. I'm, I'm curious about that one. And then last up, this is the Petalette palette. So the mattes are definitely powdery, but they seem pigmented. So I think that might be something fun to play with. So it's definitely colors that I like building a look with. And I feel like that is a complete eye look, which is once again, what I'm looking for. I really like finding those kind of complete eye looks when I'm talking about these quads. So there are eight of them here, six new and two old. I am gonna set these all to the side and really start to test the heck out of these uh, for my drugstore roundup for spring. So I'm putting these all in the test pile versus keep pile and when I do my full review of these I will tell you which ones I'm keeping and which ones I am decluttering. I have some sense for that now just having swatched them but uh, we'll see what true eye tests do to change my mind potentially. So last up here these are my julep duos. Now I would keep a duo for one of two reasons. One that it's got really good all over lid shades like two really good all over lid shades, something that I would see myself reaching for uh, to potentially travel with. So I would treat it almost like a really cool single shadow. I'm gonna take a matte palette, I'm gonna grab a single shadow. Same thing, I'm gonna take a matte palette, I'm gonna grab um, one of these duos because it has really good um, lid shades. The second reason would be to create a really simple eye look with two shades. So I definitely think you can get some pretty looks with two eyeshadows. So if a duo can give me a full eye look, uh, just using the two of them, then I will definitely keep it. So I'm gonna pop all these open. Now I will tell you, I think these Julep duos are underrated. I really do. I don't know as if I see myself getting rid of any of them. In fact, I have actually been thinking about doing a um, julep brand review because I found some hidden gems. There's definitely some stuff from them that I haven't cared for, but I've definitely found some real hidden gems um, as well. So this is the first duo that I had, and I think it's in their old packaging. This is in Coconuts and Cabanas. So if you want to talk about travel shades, you wanted a travel gold and a travel bronze brown shade. These are really pretty, really buttery and creamy last incredibly well on the eyes. Just a really good example of a classic duo. Uh, they're not overly metallic shades, but they're definitely shades that pack a huge pigment to them. And I really have enjoyed both of these. And because they are satin, you could definitely create a look just with these shades, in my personal opinion. Next up is Champagne and Caviar. This is gonna give you a really sort of creamy champagne pink color and then a really pretty deeper taupe shade. So that is Champagne and Caviar. Up next, this is Fifth Avenue and Broadway. And this is a good example of a little duo where I feel like I can get a full look in here. So I will run some of this through my crease and just throw this all over my lid. And you get a really, I don't know, you get a really classic, pretty, pretty combo. So you get this matte shade, this little, this little hint of peach running through your crease to kind of blend things out. And then you get this absolutely stunning, very foiled looking gold. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. This little duo is called Wine and Dine, and it's really fun. This is, makes a really pretty duo look. So you get this sort of taupey silver shade, and then this really pretty plum matte shade, and they work really well together. 
Throw that all over your lid, blend this into the outer corner and a little into the crease and up out. And it's, it's stunning together. It's a great duo. And then this last one's a lot of fun. This is cinnamon and spice. So you get a really pretty pigmented sort of deep rust color and then a really nice, it's a strange sort of almost like warm taupe, I guess is how I would describe that. Um, those also look really pretty together. Okay, so I guess what I'm saying is I'm not getting rid of any of these. I like the formula on these. They go on incredibly well with a brush. You do not use your finger. You do not need your finger to get full intense pigmentation with either the mattes or the shimmer shades. So I definitely am thinking at some point I'm gonna give you guys a Julep brand review and I will show these in use on my eyes so you can actually get a sense for what they look like applied on my eyes as just using these two shades to create a look um, and then also paired with other things. So I'm keeping all of these. They feel really nice in the hand too. They are plastic, but it's a heavier or weightier plastic. They have a mirror at the top. So they feel very nice and luxe. So I really like these. Okay guys, so here is what I'm keeping. I am keeping nine of my kind of quads and trios that we talked about. I'm actually getting rid of eight over here. So I'm getting rid of 47% of my collection. And then I have another eight over here that I need to test. And just based on my swatching today, I think there's probably gonna be about four that I keep and four that I declutter. All in all, I'm happy with this declutter. I feel like the ones that I kept are ones that I know that I love, ones that I've reached for ones that I've traveled with and ones that are decluttering I don't really think I'm going to miss out of my collection so that wraps us up for today for a slightly shorter declutter video and it gets us through all of my eyeshadow palettes I will say that I am intending to come back here in pretty short order and go through my high-end palettes again because you guys are currently seeing present day uh, decluttering for my drugstore palettes and then also today for these little duos and trios you've seen present day color collection. What you haven't seen is present day collection for all of my high-end eyeshadow palettes. The declutter series you watched before was actually from summer of last year. So I definitely want to come back and do a declutter for my high-end eyeshadow palettes uh, currently. But that is all for today, folks. I hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.